Welcome to a new stream, Dwarf Fortress, today. So we're going to start to create a new world here in a second. But before we do, just want to kind of capture what my settings are here. Um, using Lazy New Pack, as you should as well. Left almost everything the same, but I set the population to 40. Uh, when you hit 50, you start having wear creatures, and you have a mayor, and additional noble issues. So... I generally leave the population capped at 40 for the first year, year and a half, just until I feel like I've kind of have the fortress stabilized. Um, it, it makes it a little bit easier. I tend to think actually if if people just do that, the game is much more approachable. A lot of people have issues with the first couple months as migrant waves show up and you don't have enough beds, you don't have enough shops, you don't have enough of anything, and you kind of feel overwhelmed. And if you set things to the population of 40, you can kind of manage as they show up. So let's jump over here. Like I said, we're playing Dwarf Fortress. This is a 0.47.05. I'm also using a version of DF Hack that actually builds in commands, so you can hit the tilde button here and bring up uh, additional help, sometimes cheats, sometimes just streamline processes, sometimes just kind of fix Dwarf Fortress. So now they have this built-in capability, which I think makes it pretty easy. But let's create a new world for this. All right, the usual thing, hit escape to continue. So what size? Going to stick with a medium size. Large is nice. If you're going to play a long time, large is great, but it does take longer to process. I change history to short. If you go very short, five is very, it's far too short in my opinion. Um, 125 years, you've got some books written, you've got some civilizations established, but you're having to hit that tipping point where necromancers start to take over everything. I'm going to leave everything else the same, just the default settings, and hit go. Let's see how long this takes. Uh, medium world, not too bad. 125 years, not too bad. The first several years, I'd say the first 75 years are pretty quick. I'm already flying up 50. There's 60. There's 70. As it, the longer it goes, the longer it takes because it's keeping track of more historical figures. Uh, more born, more die. A lot of events still tracking through all this. The creation and destruction of civilizations. You see the purple popping up. In each one of those, you can look around for where the tower is. The purple are the necromancers who start building these kingdoms of the undead which can give you a lot of fun to play around if, if you want to do that. But dealing with undead is different than dealing with goblins. All right, so that's it. And it named our uh, our world the Wondrous Domain. Let me make a quick note of that here, because I'll name it. I wish it actually named the file that. So we'll just accept this. I see no reason not to. We know nothing about it yet. Once it finishes offloading these units, we will take a look and see what we've got here. It's funny saving coin information. If, if in the game you can actually mint coins, and every year the game randomly generates a design for a coin, uh, front and back, it's pretty cool. We'll start playing. See, it just names it Region 1, but we can rename it... Wondrous Domain. Now we'll know which world it is in case you have multiple worlds. We're going to play Dwarf Fortress. And let's get into it. If you haven't played, it's actually calculating the effects on the world during these next 15 days. So again, it keeps track of the history of this whole world. Alright, so here's our world. If you have never played this, this area here is the full world map. All the way to the right. Under each one of these, you have more of a region, so it's a zoomed-in section. So here's our X here. It's kind of zooming in this, this box area up here. And then inside this single square is the local, and you can move around the local for where you want to embark. And you can choose the size of your embark. Um, pull and shift, you can make it taller, you can make it wider, you can make it narrower. Um, why would you want to do that? The bigger it is, the larger the map you're going to play on is, the more natural resources you have access to. But it'll also add to the amount of things your computer has to calculate. 
So 4x4 four four is pretty standard. If you're going to play a long time, Big Fortress, a lot of stuff, you, you can go down to 3x3 three three and that'll help your computer a lot. I mean, 9 versus 16 is managing significantly less resources, but you have less you can mine out. Uh, so then we're going to look over on the right side and you can see information about the area. So just over where my 4x4 my four four Embark is right now, it's over a mountainous area. It's cold, there's no trees, there's moderate other vegetation. The surroundings is considered wilderness, which is kind of a neutral neutral. And there is a brook in the area that we'll have access to. We have deep metal and flux stone. DF hack though gives you an embark assistance. So you hit A and it gives you more information. So the area we have now, if you look over to the left, this area, if I embark to it, they have clay, soil between zero and two levels of soil. As you move around, you can see where the soil is. So I went to mountains, now there's no soil. Go down to the hills, and we now have more soil. But you can also see what's, if I go mining, what I'm gonna find? Flux stone, uh, in this case, it's the marble. Got gold, there's goblins in the area. Not much more. This is actually not a very good embark location. Gold sounds good, and you can make things worth a lot of money and trade for them. But you have no other metals in which to build a military with. So let's actually use the DF hack embark finder. So we're going to hit F. And these are all the things we can search for. I generally leave the uh, XY dimension at a 4x4. I think it's a pretty good standard. Things I care about today. I'd like goblins to be in the area, so I'm just going to say present. I'd like humans to be in the area, I would say, say present. I want access to iron. I want min trees very scarce. I need at least some trees in the area. You can pick your biomes, and that's actually not a bad idea kind of hoping to go temperate because I want access to hemp for this build. So let's do that. Let's see, I want that. Can I do more than one? No. Oh, okay, I have to pick one for each one. All right, let's do this. Let's make forest broadleaf and then I want forest I do marsh, freshwater temperate, and then forest conifer. Let's see what that gives us. That gives us iron. It gives us the temperate area. And then I'm going to do one more thing. I want the area to be flat. I like the area to be flat. I'd also like, there should be soil around here. Min soil. I need at least shallow. Let's see what that does for us. Let's hit F for find. Did I mess that up? Okay. Did not find anything. Yeah, okay, so maybe that's too much. Get rid of some of these and just see if that was the problem. Alright, that appears to not be working. Why are you not working? Are these not possible? I wonder if it needs all three biomes. Maybe that's the problem. So I don't want three biomes in one place. I bet that's it. So let's just see what we can find in a... Boy, that's not easy. All right, instead of saying temperate, why don't we go to... There should be something in here for freezing. Freezing. I want... At most, partially frozen. Now let's hit find. There she goes. Now she's doing search. So I just narrowed things far too down to find anything. 
So it's going to go through, see if it can find us anything. Probably nothing near the poles. Still scanning. Not finding much. Where did I mess this up? Okay, here we go. It's found a couple items. See the items around here that it's highlight. It's kept kind of highlighted green. That's where we're gonna look. So this area here, the bottom of the world down here, they're flashing now. So we'll scroll on down. All right, look at these areas. Okay, okay. There's not much over there. If you look all the way on the left, you see the areas that flash. Those are the areas that say they can meet your requirements. Um, what's this? One spot. Well, actually, that means a 4x4, four four, so it goes to that. So that area there has soil. Only one deep, though. Uh, it's flat. has flux and iron, so you can make steel there. But our farming is not going to be what I had hoped it would be. All right, let's see what else we got here. Let's go down. Oh, what's that? 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 There's just not a lot of soil here. I, like, I actually like a good deep soil. If I can find it, I may give up some things to get deeper soil. Okay, again, everything I wanted, but nothing I want. All right, let's jump to a different area. Let's jump over down here. What is this area down here near the shore? Down near the shore, all sorts of stuff. Um, F1. So that's one biome. So see, it crosses biomes a bit. So that first area is going to be tropical grassland. It's not going to have what I want. This is all tropical. Tropical shrubland. Hmm. I have to do a quick little research here on the side. Let me look up something here. So, so I wanted to use hemp, but you can use flax as well as a really good all purpose. What, okay, it grows in tropical grassland and tropical savanna. So actually, let's let's drop back down here because if I can find flax, it's really really useful. Tropical grassland, scorching. There are some trees there. Moderate vegetation. The surroundings are calm. So we're not getting attacked by too many crazy animals. It's got iron, gold, silver, copper. Tin, let me, it's got everything. Soil is all over the place. Okay, what if I go down here? Still in tropical grassland. Got everything, basically the same. You can't go out here, I don't know why. You can't embark in the middle of the ocean. Let's drop down one more. That was all in the ocean. What's this? Tropical shrubland. This is 
soil. That's good. And it's tropical scrubland, though, so it's not going to give me what I want. Let's change this up here. All right, I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. I changed the fine parameters. Literally just looking for iron and grassland temperate. It's all I'm looking for. And here's what I found here. So there's already a, a civilization right above us, but that's fine. We can move in next door. And if you look, there's, there's deep soil, sand, there's clay, so that's really good. There's iron, silver and copper, nickel, tin, so lots, lots of good stuff here. It's flux level, so we've got everything we need here. As I move around, if you look on the world map on the right, you can see kind of where the different civilizations are. I'm gonna find the Dwarven civilization near us. It's probably them there, so we're a little hamlet outside, and that's fine. They can be near us and maybe protect us unless they piss everybody off. We've got dwarves, humans, elves, goblins. We've got... So we'll pick a little kind of divot here. Uh, relatively flat, not crazy, but there'll be some hills. Warm, plenty of woodland, still calm. Oh, there should be a stream. So I think we've got everything we need here. Let's do it. Let's hit embark. All right, so we got to prepare for our journey. We're gonna prepare carefully. I always click over here first. Now, if you've never done this, you've got now, for right now 400 points at the bottom to spend. This is their initial list of things they think you want. They are wrong. We need one ax. We need three pickaxes, because I'm gonna have a lot of digging to do. One anvil's fine. We'll be able to make another one once we start. Make those 21. You get an extra barrel since someone has a drink. That works great. I'm not planning on planting any plump helmets, any pigtails, any cave wheat, any sweet pods, and I'm not planning on planting any dimple cups. I don't want the prepared rat intestines. I'm gonna get rid of all the fish I don't want to process right now. I don't want the plump helmets. This may seem crazy to some people, but trust me. Get rid of two of those, two of those. We don't need any of those bags. We don't need those ropes because there's cheaper ones. I'll keep those because they're sometimes harder to get in case someone has a funny, funny mood. We're going to want quivers, but we can buy those later. And all of these things are a waste because we can rebuild them. So what do we need? Hit N for new. I want to go to garden plants. And I want to see if there's anything here I might want to plant. I don't know what I'm going to plant yet exactly. But these are only two, and they're a meal each, and you can make booze out of them. So that's always a win. <clears throat> Let's plant uh, passion fruit. We'll eat some passion fruit. Let's bring ten of those. As people eat them, we'll get seeds from them. We're also going to bring milk. Now, this seems crazy. Follow my logic here. Every time you have a different kind of milk, they give you a new barrel. They only cost one, so you're buying cheap barrels that happen to come with something you can drink in them. Whereas, look at this, if you want new barrel, you want to buy a barrel, they want 10. I'm buying them for one and they come with a free milk. So, so we're buying one of each of these milks. And when we get there, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have one of our industrious dwarves make cheese. And that... Guess we're out of milk types. Okay. All right, so I got all the milk I need. Good, good, good. Now bags, leather bags, so plant bags are expensive. Leather bags are cheaper. And I just need some for all the seeds I'm gonna gather right away. Now, another thing you can do is, I mean, we'll do this. Sand comes in bags, only cost one. So we can bring 10 sandbags and just empty them and we get free bags. So let's do that. I'll leave three bags here. We got the sand. Um, thread. Let's get a couple more threads. Let's get a couple cloth. But I'm hoping to make some more thread real fast when we get there, if I can find the right plants. Um, so then, I want wood. I want willow. Because it's cheap and it's lightweight 
and we can be ready to make 30 beds. Well, we'll make like five mine carts and then like 30 and like 20 something beds out of those willows. Second. And then um, get one coke to start things. Luminous coal, baby. It's, it's cheap and it's super useful. And um, let's, let's, let's look at the stone they have here. It sounds crazy to bring stone, but there's reasons we want to bring stone. First, we're going to bring 24 of these. Gabro. Yeah, that was good because the magma safe. We can do quick building of uh, floors and a couple tables we need right away if we need blocks. So we need that. And then I wanted to see if they have something we can get our initial iron with. So let's see what we have to make iron out. So the magnetite's there. Magnetite. All right, let's just grab a couple of these because we're just going to need a few pieces of iron right away. Um, do they have petrified? Oh, they have petrified wood. Good. Let's get some of that as well. We can make our first um, set of some things with that. Okay, so. I've got what I need to survive, more than enough to survive right away and actually begin some construction. And I've freed up 200 points. Now, I do need some animals. I need two female dogs. Let's get two male dogs. One of each kind of cat. And I wanted some peacock. Just gonna get one peahen. We'll order more later, but for now, I just want one who will become both a guard bird, which sounds crazy, and will lay some eggs for us. Now, let's jump over. We freed up some space, and I gotta figure out what I want these folks to do. Everyone here is gonna be working and doing some crafting, except for one, although he'll be cooking. So, let's take a look real quick. If you view these guys, so most important, I pay most attention is dreams of crafting a masterwork, right? So, we want to pay attention to if anyone is mastering a skill, that's easier. Good. Raising a family. Raising a family is the person I want because. I have one person whose job it is to be my farmer at first. I'm going to call them my cultivator. And there would be a grower. There would be an herbalist. So I'm going to go around and grab my stuff right away. And they're going to be my woodcutter. So I'm going to try to make them an underground forest that they can tend and grow things in. So that's that person there. And let's go back and name that person, right? So. Custom, custom name and ton. You know, you're now green thumb ton. There you go. Now we know who you are. All right, now let's continue on down. Does anyone else want to masterwork? Masterwork, great work of art. Masterwork. Who is the master skill person? That's this person. All right, the other ton. For the ton, your job is going to be my um, mess hall worker, if I'm going to call you. So you're going to brew. You're going to cook. You're going to be um, a thresher, a miller. You're going to be a cheese maker. You're going to be a butcher, a tanner. Um, 
the rest of that. I got three points left. Where's the most useful thing? Brewing and cooking. Those are the most critical. Builder spinner, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'll be able to turn on soap making and stuff later. In this game, this, your, your skill doesn't matter for a lot of things. For many of the skills, about half the skills, your skill just change, your skill level changes how fast you do something. So the more they do it, the better they'll get. So as long as they have the basic skills in it, it's good. Now, brewing determines speed, cooking determines quality of meal. So let's throw the extra points in there. And then let's throw one more into Thresher. And that finishes that person off. So everyone else is going to be who they are, and they will work on what they work on. So I need a carpenter. Let's view these folks. 86 years old, 88 years old. Everyone here is pretty old. Okay, that's fine. So I'm just going to go down the list here. Oh, who's this? This is the tunnel owner. Name them. Name them. Um, Custom name. You're no longer a ton, you're a cookie. Because cookie runs the kitchen. Alright, you. I need a mason. You're gonna be my mason. Mason's critical to making high quality stuff right away. While you're at it, you're also gonna be a stone crafter. Yeah, that's that's your job. Stone crafting and mason. You do those two things and we'll be happy. And your job is going to be... Your nickname is going to be... Hmm... Rock Chip. You. I need a carpenter. To be a carpenter. You're also going to be a wood burner in case I need it. You can be a wood carver. And I'm going to make you a bowyer as well. Let's throw the extra point into wood. And bowyer. Okay. All right. There we go. You're going to nickname custom and your wood chip. Rock chip and wood chip. These other guys, here's easy. There are three miners. Okay, now I got enough points here, so let's go back. Each of them, gotta figure out who's who here. Very flimsy, ling little linguistic skill, bad sense of empathy. Not what I'm looking for. Meager shortage of patience, difficulty with words, poor focus, not great. More focus. Boy, they're not exactly all winners here. Um, personal fairness, one of the highest ideals, despise cheating of any kind. Disregards tradition, finds eloquence and artful speech off putting. I need to know one of you needs to be my broker. Doesn't particularly respect commerce. All right, that's not who we're going to want for for my broker. But you know what? We can just decide. You're going to be the manager. You're going to do two jobs here. You're going to be the manager, which is organizer, and you're going to be the bookkeeper at the same time. And with those two skills, you'll get everything you need. And all the additional points go into. I always have my miners are also the ones who do the engraving. So after they mine out stuff, when they finish with that work, they start smoothing all the rocks. And because you're giving people jobs, moral, well, let's just say Hefe. Yeah, the boss. Okay. Tell everybody what to do. All right. Doesn't see cooperation as valuable. Meager creativity. Although an overinflated sense of self-worth. That's fine. That's good. That's what you need. You're going to do judge of intent and negotiating. 
you could be my initial person who's in charge of being the broker. And everything else goes into engraver. Okay, and your name, if you're my trader, let's go easy. Trader, original name was asked. Trader, asked. There you go. And you, my friend, you don't have much going on here. But you're going to be in charge of building design. So we're going to need to get a mechanic as soon as someone shows up. And for now, oh, you need a nickname. Uh, what do you like? Let's see. I know you're fond of drink, obviously. Not distracted. I will practice. Do, 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 do. Loyalty, merrymaking. Sometimes in here it says what they like. Looking around. Oh, I'm sorry. It was right at the top here. Horn Hornblend. Electrum. Horn. Let's. All right. Hornblend. Well, congratulations. We're going to name that. Do that. Hornblend. There. All right. Don't want to do anything else. I might. I'm going to make each one of these guys a little less of an agreement than we'll go in the center. Okay. We got our folks. And we need a fort name. Shift F. Fort name. Lesson Girder. Nope. Kingdom Pillars. Nope. Earth and Ivy. I like that. We'll go Earth and Ivy. And the group name for Earth and Ivy. Quiet Lash. Blockade is spiraling. The Glove of Good. That works too. All right, everybody. That's it. Let's go back. We've got some extra cash here. What do we want them to bring? Well, let's bring that, another peahen. And another couple dogs. And we got 35 points left. So let's just throw all of that. Let's do this. Actually, each one of those is milk. 24 left. Let's get two more bags. And two more passion fruit. That's everything. E for embark. Right. You have arrived after a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness. All right, Earth and Ivy. Here we go, folks. 